Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Misha Charles. This edition's top stories. The nation's youth examined the proposed transformation of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College into a university. A new wave of environmental awareness is sweeping across the island. St. Lucia observes International Mother Language Day. All that plus the latest in youth development sports. As plans for the transformation of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College into a university college continue, students of the institution and the wider youth population have had their say on the transition, weighing the pros and cons of introducing the university. The issue of higher learning is critical for St. Lucia as the economy expands and the need for a more diverse workforce heightens. Here's Janelle Norville with details on the special youth parliament held in commemoration of the island's 40th independence anniversary. Held annually, the National Youth Parliament offers the nation's young people a forum to express their opinions on issues pertinent to the development of St. Lucia. This time around, the Youth Parliament debated the motion that sought the approval for the transformation of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College from a two-year college to a four-year university. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, External Affairs and Job Creation, Jeshurin Andrew, threw his support behind the motion. He noted the benefits for the youth if the motion were to come into fruition. Madam Speaker, with our own university, we will now be able to offer the minority scholarships because we're now able to we have our university now that is self-sufficient or we're moving, we're developing it in that direction that can offer scholarships, both academic and sports. Minister for Equity, Social Justice and Culture, Trian Philip, also expressed her unwavering support for the motion. Philip noted without the transformation of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College to a university, the country will continue to be plagued by brain drain, while those unable to afford to study overseas will remain underqualified for potential employment opportunities. We will find ourselves losing those privileged enough to seek education abroad and never returning, and then having to find qualified foreigners to come in and run our so-called independent country for us. Now tell me, Madam Speaker, how does this provide social justice to our people? Meanwhile, leader of the opposition and parliamentary representative for Castries South, Robert Rennie, questioned why the government would consider further hampering the youth in the attainment of tertiary level education. He explained that this would be the result if the college was transformed to a university as students would no longer have that bridge between secondary level education and university level education. The opposition leader also noted the cost of university education to the youth. You now have a university, you don't have a college anymore. You don't have a community college anymore. Madam Speaker, it is evident that under the current pay structure, students are already experiencing difficulties in paying the college tuition fees, Madam Speaker. When you decide to turn Arthur into a university, what you're actually doing inadvertently is that you are actually increasing the fees. Because you, some of you know very well that to do an associate's degree at Sir Arthur Lewis and to do one at the University of the West Indies in terms of the cost is, is exorbitantly different. The National Youth Parliament has been held since 1993 by the Department of Youth and Sports. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle it. Norville. The eyes have it. I therefore adjourn this house until the 8th of April 2019. A new wave of environmental awareness is sweeping across the island with the launch of conservation clubs at various schools. Anisia Antoine reports on the initiative spearheaded by the National Conservation Authority. The National Conservation Authority, NCA, in partnership with the St. Lucia National Trust, arranged a viewing of Blue Planet, Our Ocean, to launch environmental clubs in schools around the island. The initiative is part of an awareness drive titled Protecting Paradise, a Beach Education and Action Campaign. The objective is to conserve the beaches in St. Lucia. This will be achieved through a series of educational activities and the installation of bins on beaches. We have chosen to um, launch the clubs with this beach environmental education campaign starting with the movie doing and uh, continuing with a beach day and um, then a campaign to build um, 
bins on the beach and kind of educate and sensitize people to properly disposing their trash and not destroying the beach ecosystem. The five schools in attendance were Grosley Secondary, Marsha Combined, Denry Primary, Leon Hess Secondary, and PI Secondary. Coretta Crooks Charles, Communications and Advocacy Officer of the St. Lucia National Trust, explained the rationale behind the Trust's involvement. Last year we did a similar initiative with Plastic Oceans and it, it's never too much to repeat the message of the need to reduce um, pollution, especially of our oceans, because it not only affects the marine environment, it will also affect us as human beings. So we are here with five new schools. Last time we had close to 500 students and this time we have a, a bit less, but nonetheless we're still imparting the important message of the need to protect our marine environment and thereby doing protecting the livelihoods of those who rely on the oceans and our own human health. Massey's Stores, which has been a strong advocate for decreasing pollution, has donated a sum of 6,000 EC dollars towards the beach conservation campaign. Sancha Raggi is the marketing manager of Massey Stores. Now this program is very aligned to Massey Stores and our company's focus on plastic waste management and reduction and also in creating a pro-recycling environment in St. Lucia. We believe that student education is a very good place to start with behavior and changing that behavior in terms of how we manage our plastic and how we create and approach our waste. It is also important to create an environmental steward and the kids are perfect and critical where this is consumed. To conclude the first phase of the campaign, the Conservation Club members and teachers will participate in a series of science experiments and activities related to beach ecosystems at the Vigi Beach on Thursday, March 7, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. The Department of Health and Wellness, with the assistance of the St. Lucia Cancer Society, is working towards establishing a cancer registry and improving data collection of cancer on the island. As part of the efforts to establish a cancer registry in St. Lucia, a review of the cancer data collected over the past five years was conducted recently. The cancer registry is expected to serve as a surveillance tool in guiding the planning and implementation of cancer prevention and control programs. Acting national epidemiologist Dr. Michel Fersois says the cancer registry is fundamental as it will provide a better snapshot of cancer in St. Lucia. We were extremely thrilled that we were able to gather that data, which now can guide our programming, um, highlight areas that we need to emphasize on. Um, we do know that cancer is, a lot of it is preventable through early detection, through screening, and also modifying certain behavioral practices. So. Um, we look at the data to guide us, and um, there are areas which came forward that, of course, needs improvement. We have highlighted that, and the plan moving forward is to solidify this um, partnership with the St. Lucia Cancer Society, and also to include other stakeholders so that we are able to get a more accurate picture of the cancer situation in St. Lucia. President of the St. Lucia Cancer Society, Dr. Tamara Remy, says such an initiative is important as it will guide decision-making to improve prevention, control, and treatment of cancer. Cancer is here in St. Lucia. We need to be able to use the information. We have a lot of campaigns where we can help to prevent cancer. We're going to help with the provision of ways to make an early diagnosis. All the information with this collaboration between St. Lucia Cancer Society, the Ministry of Health, Epidemiology, is really going to be geared towards helping the St. Lucian public. So we're asking for your attention. We're asking that you take heed of the information that you're actually going to give and to be part of the whole process. Dr. Remy expressed hope that the cancer registry will assist in reducing the burden of cancer in St. Lucia. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. Young people across St. Lucia can now have access to quality eye care examinations, durable frames, and up-to-date lens technology with the help of the Quartz Optical brand, free of charge. The Quartz Optical Corporate Responsibility Initiative, Brighter View, seeks to develop comprehensive eye care to young individuals facing vulnerable circumstances throughout the Caribbean. The project, which began in Trinidad in 2017, 
has expanded to St. Lucia and will see 250 frames being distributed to children whose parents may not have access to comprehensive eye care. The Department of Education is proud to be a part of the initiative. There is a direct correlation between learning and eyesight. We have seen students who do not perform academically or do not perform at school. And it is not because that they do not possess the ability to do so, but it's be, it is because of challenges in viewing maybe the, the board or even looking at the words in the text. We've caught coming to the rescue, and I say the rescue of some students within our education system who have challenges, and, all, and these challenges may include socioeconomic challenges. We are very pleased to be partnering with Courts Optical. With the help of the Department of Education, the program was able to identify students within both primary and secondary institutions faced with sight challenges requiring optical attention. A healthy vision status is therefore critical to academic success, particularly with the increasing prominence and prevalence of digital technologies in education. In the world of today's students, much of learning is migrating from the page to the screen. Our world is becoming increasingly visual and access to information, to social contacts, and to economic opportunities often rest heavily upon one's capacity to access the world of images. According to the OECS Optical Chain Manager, the CSR initiative is expected to bring renewed hope to the selected beneficiaries. Brighter View primarily caters for students between the ages of 10 to 16, whom we generally refer to as single vision users. Single vision is the most common type of prescri prescription lens. This lens type features a single optical focal point or one prescription power throughout the entire lens for correcting nearsightedness, farsightedness, or astigmatism. The program is expected to reach an additional 200 to 500 students across the OECS countries where Unicoma operates. And this is the NTN Nightly, coming up the latest happenings in youth and sports with Ryan O'Brien. There are four basic rules to developing and maintaining good oral health. Brushing after meals and before going to bed, flossing at least once for the day, eating the right foods and visiting the dentist regularly. Remember, you want to keep those smiles for later years. A message from the Dental Department of the Ministry of Health and this station. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Hello once again. I'm Ryan O'Brien with your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. The 2019 Indus Schools Male and Female Volleyball Championship starts on Monday, March 4th. Schools have been divided into groups, male category, Group A, Grosley Secondary, Corinth Secondary, Bocard Secondary, Fate Butai, St. Mary's College, Leon Hess Comprehensive, Group B, Miku Secondary, Clendon Mason Secondary, South and Lewis Community College, Stanley John Audler Memorial, Sufre Comprehensive Secondary School. In the female competition, Group A, St. Joseph's Convent, Bocage Secondary, Sufre Comprehensive Secondary, Corin Secondary, Group B, Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, Miku Secondary, Fitbutai Secondary, and Leon Hess Comprehensive. The playing venue will be the VG Multipurpose Sports Complex. Now let's take a look at the competition format. In the first round and in each category, teams in each group will engage in a round robin among themselves. At the end of round one, the first and second place male and female teams from each group will advance automatically to the semi-finals. The loser of each semi-final will play for the bronze medal or third place and then the winner of each semi-final will play for the gold medal or the first place honours. The Young Sports Leaders first training program for 2019 went to 
its penultimate day at the Viji Malipaba Sports Complex on Wednesday. A number of young sports leaders have been put through a rigorous program over the past few days. Nairon Taliam is Program Development Officer at the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports and one of the facilitators at the training session. Well, so far what has happened is that we have been actually teaching our young persons to become local tutors. So we have been teaching them certain skills in facilitation so that when they go out there, they are able to impact the knowledge on the young people. The next step for them is that we will expect them to go back in the community to actually use the facilitation skills that they have learned to put into practice and also they are going to actually facilitate one of our young sport leader program. And finally, we bring you an update on the strategic planning program for the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. It's now going through its second phase of engagement with additional stakeholder groups. On Tuesday, they met with national association leaders to review the feedback from the first round of discussions between November and December 2018. That's our update for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien saying goodbye. Thanks, Ryan. International Mother Language Day is a worldwide annual observance to promote awareness of linguistic and cultural diversity and promote the use of more than one language, either by an individual speaker or by a community of speakers. First announced by UNESCO in 1999, International Mother Language Day is an opportunity for the organization to encourage member states to look at the status of indigenous languages and the important role they can play in fostering social cohesion. As part of its observance, St. Lucia launched a poetry competition which seeks to highlight the Creole language. The Creole poetry competition is really an opportunity for us to celebrate our linguistic diversity, to celebrate our cultural heritage, to celebrate our linguistic heritage. And um, we're, it's coinciding with the 40th anniversary of our independence. So we're also um, using the opportunity to encourage St. Lucians to reflect on the theme of the independence to reflect on our journey as a people and as a nation, how far we've come and how collectively and individually as well we can chat a way forward for a society that is peaceful and, and, and um, prosperous. So we want St. Lucians to consider expressing their own reflection on independence through poetry in Creole. The poetry competition is open to the public in two categories, junior and senior. Persons are encouraged to submit their proposals, their entries to the National Commission for UNESCO. They could access the information on our Facebook page. They could also call the office to get additional information regarding the competition. We have some very exciting prizes, including cash prizes um, for the entries um, to the competition. International Mother Language Day was observed on February 21. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayon. With just one click, the internet connects people, businesses, and nations. Being connected can open a world of information and opportunities. You can get services and products of your choice much faster. From electronic financial transactions to connecting with family and friends. From being up to date with the latest news and information to learning new skills and acquiring academic qualifications. All from the convenience of your home or wherever you roam. Get connected today. This message is brought to you as a public service announcement by Ectel, the NTRC, and this station. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquion. Monsieur Tanisha, Monsieur Madame, Department of Responsibility for Information, Government Service, that's the GIS. As we be television national be a NTN Capazato, Nouvelle Aquion, Presato, Primus Hutchinson. Les officiers gouvernement, les officiers diplomates, et président de assemblée pour un témoignage. D'ailleurs, une cérémonie pour ouvrir officiellement l'usine pour produire divers articles de caco et clôt d'aoué et fruitage. L'investissement cela qui est établi par le gouvernement cette ci et le lion Europe coûte plusieurs millions de dollars. Le ministre pour l'agriculture, honorable Ezekiel Joseph, déclare qu'il est très excité pour délivrer une facilité en dégoût cela 
pour les résidents en façade nord et sud Miku. Selon M. Joseph, faciliter facilite cela est très important parce que le fruitage à cette ci est par saison. Il y a remarqué que les noni mago noni trop et c'est même pour tout l'autre fruitage avec Dawi. Et ça qui a fait la majorité en ces fruits là qui a gaspillé. Le représentatif de l'Europe, Bogdan Stefanesco, a déclaré qu'il était plein qui a fait la qualité de la contribution pour projeter les îles, particulièrement pour que ce qui a fait la production de FIG et que FIG PIA a avancé sur la place de la France. Selon le ministre agricole, FIG nous a sur la place là, a sur la place de la France, pour former plus qui pays à tenir plein pour. Cette ci a trouvé déjà 10 millions d'euros pour agrandir, faciliter, pour produire divers articles pour le fruitage pays. À. Produit agricole qui a continué à trouver bon support à sur la place de l'Angleterre. Récemment, la compagnie Mangal Trading a bah conduit Isle Mangal a une grande quantité de régime fig, banane et cocom pour l'Angleterre. Si le Mamsel Mangal, le business là a expérimenté en pile de difficultés à ta passé. Mais récemment, il a trouvé beaucoup de succès et puis assistance export solution. Mangal conseille que pour les jeunes gens trouver un succès en business, c'est faut ni en bas de patience. Mais aussi, mettre business de l'Angleterre est très satisfait et puis ses produits qui te vendent. Plus de ça, le business de l'Angleterre a déjà montré l'intérêt pour acheter plus encore. Comme ça, là, Mangal a annoncé le business anglais qui a demandé pour plus de différentes qualités de produits. Mais il pour l'export de l'Angleterre. Son étude Daniel, qui que le programme de business et puis l'Angleterre a ouvert le chemin pour avancer le programme de diversification agricole du pays. Daniel a déclaré que Mangal suit la direction de l'organisation et que ça a aidé autant. Il a marqué aussi. Export de l'Angleterre, qui travaille pour agrandir le business et puis l'Angleterre, parce que ça a aidé à stabiliser l'économie, la sécurité et une cause plus de travail en pays cette ci Export de l'Angleterre, c'est une initiative du gouvernement cette ci et aussi c'est une agence là qui est bien avancée et responsable pour pousser l'effort pour développer les produits national et aussi placer les produits pays dans le haut degré. Organisation du gouvernement, ça là pour agrandir le business de cette ci au Liban, la terre, pour augmenter le produit local, assister le business et prouver à ce profit et pour entretenir l'existence de ce business là un effort pour faire contribution qui a apporté autant de valeur pour le pays. À ce programme, nous, aujourd'hui, nous allons continuer pour tuer avec des fruitiers à des premiers ministres honorables Alain Chasney pour être bons et de 2019. En continuation sur l'adresse à la, le Premier ministre Chasse de à ce peuple pays cette ci pour bander ou pour virer oui bâti richesse sociale et économie pays nous. Selon le Premier ministre Chasse si c'est la peine les y a si quantité cette ci qui a vivre à bas ces constats qui pas bon pièce de bonne main. Le Premier ministre l'a déclaré que c'est faux nous tout ça qui fait ça qui est nécessaire pour protéger peuple pays à la bonne santé, mais qui a pour et qui ont des éducation qui a embrassé ces places de travail et ça a demandé à présent. En haut de ça, selon le Premier ministre Chasné, la mérité est fort de unité entre le gouvernement et toutes ces policiers pour établir garantissement pour sécurité et protection. Honorable Chasné a assuré que nous seulement qui avons accompli le succès si nous travaillons plus et puis plus la sagesse qu'on un pays et qu'il faut nous faire ça ensemble. Le Premier ministre Chasse fait un appel pour nous, pour nous, qu'on un pays, en observance, en évasion de dépendance, pour changer ces sept lycéens, malgré ce qu'ils ont débrouillé, et qu'ils ont continué à service pour payer nous. Il mentionne les marchands, les mamans, les cultivateurs, et bien, pharma, les pêcheurs, les chauffeurs l'auto, les passagers, les travailleurs hôtel, même les qui ont des frères, Timothy Polio, Rick Wynn, et plusieurs autres journalistes. Aussi, chauffeur taxi, et les gens qui ont nettoyé la ville et le village. Le premier ministre Chasné a aussi créé à ce secrétaire pour apprécier ces noces qui ont occupé les malades, les athlètes, comme Cuthbert Modest, les instituteurs, comme Sister Claire, 
Augusta Eiffel et Philippe Ninja Etienne qui ont aidé pour indiquer plusieurs générations en pays nous. Tout ce monde qui a occupé les plus grands citoyens, comme Madame Ernesta Brown en Sophie, Société Cornerstone, Madame Juliette Brockwood, et M. Desmond Philip, qui a poursuivi le logement pour s'acquitter à nos côtés pour rester. Premier ministre Chasté a remarqué que ces gens ne pas jamais cherché pour les copains. Ils ont fait service là pour l'amitié et la compassion pour les gens et les pays. C'est ici. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons une nouvelle aujourd'hui. Je vous remercie autant pour vous écouter. Je vous remercie invitation. Pour vous remercie encore. Je vous remercie pour votre nouvelle créole. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Travis.